This video is on the brainstem. Brainstem. And the brainstem connects your cerebral cortex to basically everything else. So if we draw your cerebral cortex and let's say it is your spine, well, it's your brainstem that connects your spine to your cortex. And if you have your cerebellum, we said your cerebellum controls motion and needs to get to this motor cortex. Well, how does it get to it? Through your brainstem. Yeah? So it connects that too through your cerebellar peduncle. So it connects a ton of different things. So it connects your spine, connects your cerebellum. What else did we talk about the brainstem then? We talked about it in cranial nerves, right? Your cranial nerves come out of your brainstem. So cranial nerves. So there's a lot that goes on in your brainstem. Okay, and in this video, we're gonna talk about all of these. We're gonna talk about spine, cerebellum, and cranial nerves, and we're gonna try and kind of recap, kind of go over some of the things we've learned previously and try and synthesize it together in talking about brainstem anatomy. So I'll start with the spine first. We said your spinal cord kind of looks like this. And cut in half, so one side deals with one side of your body, the other side deals with the other. And this would be the dorsal end, or the posterior end. This side would be the ventral anterior end. And your spinal cord takes sensation, goes up to your brain, and your brain sends motor signals back. So sensation-wise, you have these columns in the dorsal end, called your dorsal columns. They deal with things like touch and position and proprioception and vibration. And then you have your lateral spinothalamic tract. Lateral spinothalamic. And that deals with pain and temp, right? So those are all your sensation that goes to your brain. Your brain processes it, sends motor signal back. Your motor signals became your anterior and lateral cortical to spinal tract, cortical spinal tract, cortical spinal. And we say your dorsal columns, they ascend all the way up to your medulla and they're medial, right? They're, medial part, they're in the medial part of your spinal cord and so when they ascend to your medulla, they stay medial, medial. And then once they hit your medulla, they'll cross over and go where it needs to go. We say your lateral spinothalamic tract, however, crosses over immediately, immediately, and then it ascends. And because it's in the lateral part of your spinal cord, it will ascend all the way to your lateral medulla. All right, lateral medulla. So these are all your sensory inf information that goes to your brain. Brain processes it, sends it back. So your cortex will process it, send a signal to your medulla, then your medulla will cross over, and then finally go into your cortical spinal tracts. And that sends your motor. Motor. All right, that's just a quick recap of the spinal cord. Now, a quick recap of the cerebellum. We say your cerebellum controls your emotion, so it needs to go to the motor cortex, and the only way it can do that is through your brainstem, through these peduncles. Peduncles. And we had your superior peduncle, middle peduncle, inferior peduncle. All right, and finally, cranial nerves. Your cranial nerves come out of your brainstem. All right? And it's very important to know where in the brainstem they come out. So let's finally talk about the anatomy of the brainstem. Quick and dirty. We'll say this is your midbrain. This is your pons. This is your medulla. This is your brainstem. Midbrain, pons, medulla. This would be a ventral view of your brainstem. So we're looking at it like this, face on, if you transect it here and you saw my brain, it look like this. So midbrain, pons, medulla. Now the first four cranial nerves will be above the pons, the next four will be in the pons, and then the next four, the last four will be in the medulla. That's easy enough. And in fact, it's so easy, I'm not even gonna write it, but I'm not concerned so much as it's where the nerves are, I'm concerned about where the processing center is, where do they stem from, the nuclei. Yeah, that's the part we're concerned about. So in the midbrain, only cranial nerve three and four have their processing centers in the midbrain. One doesn't have a processing center, it goes straight to your cortex. Two is above the midbrain. All right, it does have some input in the midbrain we talked about our, um, when we talked about light reflex, but just know that 
for your intents and purposes, the midbrain contains nuclei three and four. And then the pons, we said it contained the next four, so five, six, seven, eight. And the nuclei happen to all be here, five, six, seven, eight. And then the medulla was had the last four cranial nerves. And the cranial nerve nuclei also happen to be here. Nine, 10, not 11. 11 stems from the spine, remember? 11 is your spinal accessory nerve. So nine, 10, and 12. So these are where your nuclei are. So that was the cranial nerve part. Now let me just add the spinal part. We said your dorsal columns, because they're kind of medial, they ascended up to your medulla. They stay medial, so they'll stay medial. Right, this is your dorsal columns. Medial. We say your lateral ascending tracts stayed lateral. So they kind of be right here. Lateral tracts. Lateral spinothalamic. So in our talk about brain cinema anatomy, we added the information from cranial nerves. We added our information from our spinal video. Cerebellum. Well, from this view, from this view, you're not gonna see a cerebellum. The cerebellum is in the back of your head. So if we look at the dorsal, the, the back view, then we'll be able to see it. So if we look at the back view, you still have your midbrain, you still have your pons, you still have your medulla, but it looks a little bit different. You have your cerebellum, smack dab right over here. Now if you cut the cerebellum off, then you'll be able to see those peduncles. You'll be able to see those peduncles attached. So, all right, peduncle. And since we're talking about brainstem anatomy, let's just add some other things that are in your brainstem. In your midbrain, you have something called your pineal gland. Pineal gland. We've already talked about the pineal gland. What does your pineal gland do? It secretes melatonin. Underneath, you have these two little nuggets called your superior colliculi and they help deal with vertical gaze looking up and then underneath the superior colliculi you have your okay, you guessed it inferior colliculi colliculi just means a protuberance and so that's a pretty fitting name inferior colliculi and your inferior colliculi we talked about we talked about our thalamus, the inferior, inferior colliculi helps auditory input. All right, so some pathology, if you have a pineal gland, pineal oma, when we are talking on tumors, when we had a pineal gland, pineal oma, didn't we say it can compress on the superior colliculi and cause your eyes to no longer look up? What we call that Perinal syndrome, Perinal. Hopefully these things are coming back to you. Hopefully it's more of a review than learning things. All right, so that is the anatomy of your brainstem. I don't think that's too bad. I think it's pretty all right. Now there's some blood vessels that go through the brainstems and you have so many important things going through your brainstems. You can imagine if you have a stroke in them or if you have an occlusion in them, then they won't be able to supply these important components and you'll show really drastic signs. So let's just talk about the blood vessels. What color do I want to do it in? Let's do it in red. That's a fitting color. One of the biggest blood vessels that you're gonna find that go up your brainstem is gonna be your basilar artery. This is a throwback way, way, way back. Way, way, way back. Remember, I think it was like a fourth video. We talked about the, the blood of our the blood that supplies the cerebral cortex, yeah? That was your circle of Willis. And you had your two vertebral arteries, your two vertebral arteries that came together and made your basilar artery. And that made your PCA, your posterior cerebral artery. And then you had your two carotids that came together and made your anterior um, cerebral artery and your middle cerebral artery that made your circle of Willis. So your two vertebral arteries come together and make your basilar artery. Basilar. But this isn't the only artery in this region. You have a small one that goes right in the middle of your medulla called your 
Anterior spinal artery. Anterior spinal artery. And your anterior spinal artery supplies the middle of your medulla, so your medial medulla. And if it supplies the medial medulla, something has to supply the lateral medulla. And there is something that supplies the lateral medulla. So there's an artery that supplies the lateral medulla. And that's called your posterior inferior cerebellar artery. So all right, lateral medulla. That's a lot of arteries for your medulla because your medulla is incredibly important. So there are arteries above. There's one main one that supplies your pons. So I'll just write an artery that supplies your pons. It doesn't look like that, by the way. Just drawing it to be simplistic. And this is called your anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now in total, we have four arteries that we just listed. All right, so we'll start from the top down. We have your anterior inferior cere cerebellar artery. We'll label that as number one. Work our way down, we have our posterior inferior cerebellar artery. We'll label that number two. And then we're gonna talk about your anterior spinal next. The thing that supplies the med middle of your medulla, your medial medulla. And then lastly, we'll talk about your basilar artery because we've already discussed that previously. Label that four. So let's discuss these now. Your anterior inferior cere cerebellar artery, all right, A-I-C-A, is gonna supply your pons. Now, if you knock off that pons, if you knock off the artery that supplies your pons, then these important cranial nerve nuclei, these processing centers are gonna get knocked out. And so you're gonna have weakness in all of these, five, six, seven, and eight. That makes sense. If you have weakness in five, you're gonna have loss of sensation. You also have, don't forget, it also supplies things like lacrimation, salivation, so you have to decrease those too. So all right, five, decrease lacrimation, salivation. Six isn't, six isn't too clinically important. Seven is a big one though. Seven is the muscles of your face. So you have facial droop, facial droop. Seven also supplies the taste of your anterior two-thirds. So you have decreased taste, all right? Decreased taste. Cranial nerve eight, that's for your vestibular cochlea. That deals with hearing, also deals with um, position sense. All right, so you knock that out, you're gonna have things like vertigo, you're gonna have things like nystagmus. So right, vertigo, nystagmus. And some minor things, it is your pons, and your pons carries your cere cerebellar peduncles. So you knock off your peduncles, in, in particular your middle and your inferior, you're gonna have problems with movement. That makes sense, so you have things like ataxia. One other thing that you should know, it seems to, it seems to knock out your lateral spinal thalamic tract also, and that deals with pain attempts, so you're gonna have decreased pain attempt sensation. We call all this lateral pontine syndrome. The reason we call it lateral pontine syndrome is because this blood supplies supplies your pontine, in particular, in particular your lateral side. So if your lateral pontine artery is knocked off, then you get lateral pontine syndrome. And it culminates in all this. The most important one is gonna be facial droop. All right, you get facial droop, and then you have all these other symptoms and then look in the answers or the question stem for this particular artery, anterior, inferior, cerebellar artery. Next up, what's our next one? Posterior, inferior, cerebellar artery. Or pica. That deals with your lateral medulla. Innervates your lateral medulla. Now this artery is a little bit tricky. The nuclei of cranial nerve eight seems to share a supply of both your anterior inferior and also your posterior inferior. So eight can also get destroyed. You can get vertigo and nystagmus. Another cranial nerve nuclei that gets destroyed is gonna be your nucleus ambiguous. 
We talked about this when we talked about cranial nerves, especially our vagal nuclei. What does nucleus ambiguous do? That innervates the motor, the muscles inside your mouth, things like swallowing. What cranial nerves took place in this? That'd be things like 9, 10, and the cranial part of 11. All right, so that goes. So you have things like problems swallowing, all right, dysphagia. And in fact, this is the most important finding in PICA. All right. You can have some minor findings. Again, this likes to affect your lateral spinal thalamic tract because we, you are talking about something that innervates your lateral medulla, so it would affect your lateral tract. So decreased pain temp can affect your sympathetic tract. So you get Horner's. can affect your lowest peduncle, your inferior peduncle. Inferior peduncle. Guess what I cause? Ataxia. So this is a lot of different symptoms. And we call all this lateral medullary syndrome. Why do you think we call it lateral medullary syndrome? Because it's a blood supply that supplies your lateral medulla and if you knock it off then you have all these signs called lateral medullary syndrome and these are a lot of different kind of vague kind of weird signs that might be difficult to pick up on a question stem but once you look at the answer choices then it's very clear what they're looking for and if you're able to find out the most specific part which is damage to your nucleus ambiguous it should send off a red flag dysphagia then you should be able to know it's something wrong with your pica okay so if you know the most important aspect of these, dysphagia for PICA, facial droop for AICA, then it makes things easier. All right. Those are your first two. Your third one, anterior spinal artery. Anterior spinal. Your anterior spinal artery is going to supply the medium medulla. And if you knock out the medial medulla, then you'll knock off also these dorsal columns. Now we said that the dorsal columns will ascend up to your medulla and then cross over. Yeah. When they cross over that tract is sometimes just called your medial lemniscus. If you hear medial lemniscus, don't get confused. That just means the dorsal tract has crossed over. All right. And your dorsal columns deal with things like touch, perception, vibration. You knock that off, you're gonna have decrease. And it's gonna be contralateral because they've crossed over. So decrease sensation contralaterally. It also seems to really like this cranial nerve in the era, area. Cranial nerve 12, what's cranial nerve 12? That's your hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal, what does your hypoglossal nerve do? It innervates the muscles of your tongue, your glossus muscles. So you try and stick out your tongue and it'll deviate. What side does it deviate to? What side of the lesion? Deviates to the same side of the lesion, ipsilateral. So tongue deviation. I'll put this as a gold star. This is one of those specific symptoms that you should be able to recognize. Tongue deviation with things like loss of sensation. We're talking about this. Last but not least, it likes to affect your cortico Spinal tract. What does your cortical spinal tract of your spine do? Sends motor. So cortical spinal. You'd have decreased motor. We call all this medial medullary syndrome. Why do you think we call it that? Because there's a artery that supplies the medial part of your medulla. If you knock that off, you get medial medullary syndrome. All right, look for tongue deviation and then loss of sensation and loss of motor. Last but not least, your basilar artery. I'm gonna write up here. Your basilar artery, basilar artery, <coughs> goes up your brainstem and there are branches that spread all over your brainstem. And if you knock that off, it's devastating. It basically innervates everything except 
What does it innervate? I mean, it contributes to basically everything. So if you knock it off, it's devastating. And clinically, what you'll see is you'll lose everything but your consciousness. You won't be able to move. You won't be able to talk. You won't be able to say anything. You won't be able to do anything. You're just conscious. However, you're still conscious in there. We call that locked in syndrome. But your consciousness is there. You just can't do anything. It's, it's devastating. So that's what already you include that. You get locked in syndrome. Got it. That is your brainstem anatomy. That, uh, that's all the arteries that supply and what can go wrong. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.